I'm really excited today. I haven't been filming in a while ever since my solo trip. I just went offline. I got into um, a feeling of wanting to quit social media. It's the first time I've ever felt this way and so I just kind of backed off a little bit. I thought maybe giving myself some time I would change the perspective. It's hard being an influencer because you're constantly showing up your life. Sometimes you just want to kind of be private. I'm sure everyone's felt that way. But imagine like your life is basically what you get paid off doing, which can be exhausting really excited today we have a drink and i asked you guys on instagram to send in questions i'm gonna be replying to i was thinking of doing a mukbang or a get ready with me or just doing something and then i was just like dana you can chill you can just talk to your friends you don't always have to like do something i'm sure people like me anyway so first question being, why do you regret almost all of your tattoos? I've recently been putting up on Instagram while I'm lasering my tattoos. This is a subject I have a hard time talking about because it is still very sensitive to me. I'm going through it currently. It's hard to accept something you have a hard time accepting, if that makes sense. And on top of that, talking to people about it, I just don't feel like I'm the right person to ask. I feel a little bit better now. I have um, lasered off one. It's completely gone now, my Arabic tattoo. And I'm now working on a second tattoo, which is a gun on my thigh. I don't like any of my tattoos. It's not my specific tattoos that I have on my body. Honestly, just tattoos in general. I don't feel like that's me today. It was Diana five years ago. I feel like a complete different person today. I almost feel a little too mature for tattoos. I feel like they just look dirty on my body and it's gotten to a point where I just completely hate my arm. I would love if you guys could comment down below if you feel the same way because I feel very lonely in it and whenever I talk to people about it, I just feel very stupid for getting such a big decision not only one tattoo my whole freaking arm tatted up and then regretting it all after five years it just feels very i can't accept it it's it's, it's hard for me to accept already gotten them and like I don't know how to put it. Someone goes, planning to visit Dubai in winter. I don't know how much I should talk about this because we still haven't booked our flight, but it's looking like we're going very, 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 very soon. I'm gonna stop there. You guys have to stay tuned to see the rest. I not gonna say too much because i don't know if it's gonna happen just yet once it's booked i will let you guys know but it's looking like it's gonna happen okay i really want to talk about my solo trip in dubai what i learned from it if i recommend it um my fears how i overcame them all that kind of stuff my video from dubai is currently on 72,000 views and whenever i'm in dubai i get the best content and i know people really enjoy it that's why i feel like it's so good for my career i just feel like it's the place for me to be in my career with that being said the whole trip the solo trip was an investment in myself what i learned from that trip and the fears that i overcame are so worth it it was probably one of the big challenges this year it sounds stupid but it was just very scary going by yourself sitting on a flight for six hours waking up every single day at a hotel doing all these things just by yourself is challenging it's very very difficult it's it's scary i would recommend everyone to go on a solo trip you cannot imagine how many amazing things you're gonna learn just being by yourself you have so much more time to explore and you have so much more time to get to know new people and do things that you maybe wouldn't think about doing if you were with someone else definitely had a couple of mental breakdowns i <laughs> <laughs> it's it's life but i feel like whenever something is so difficult it's because you are growing out of your comfort zone say if this is your comfort zone this is the things that you are used to this is your pattern every single day once you come here like outside of this coming out of that comfort zone there's a barrier it's barrier you guys know what I mean. You're gonna have to break through something that feels comfortable. You're getting out of a pattern you're used to, to get on the other side. But that means on the other side, there is something waiting for you that's greater than what you had. If you don't get out of your comfort zone, then there is no space for new things to arrive. Literally just be to another city in your own country. I just feel like it's 
just about doing it it's not about where you go the next question goes what is one thing that helped you change your perspective on life ah heavy question sorry <laughs> Um, one thing that's helped me the most in this life and being someone with a lot of anxiety in my day-to-day -day life is separating me from my life situation. So whatever I'm going through at the moment, separating myself from that, that is just my life situation. That's not my life. I like to think of it as me being the sky and then whatever I'm going through is the weather underneath. The weather changes all the time. It can be sunny, it can be rainy, it can snow one day, but I am the sky, I remain the same. And that is like my higher self, if that makes sense. Like that's my consciousness. Think of it as I'm just going through this right now it's not a problem it's it's just something that i'm going through just kind of don't select if things are good or bad because that way you will constantly be either happy or sad we all are going through things you guys that also means detaching yourself from past traumatic situations if there's something that happened to you in your childhood you have to be able to cut yourself from that that's not you it's something it's an injury that happened to you and you have to stay present because if you stay present there is no space for future or past anxiety i think a lot of anxiety and depression comes from thoughts on either the past or the future stressing about what's gonna happen how am i gonna sort this how is it gonna go that is what put us in bad mental health you guys if you just stick to the present moment and you kind of just live right this second there is no space for anything else it's kind of sickening maybe take five minutes of your day to just kind of concentrate on living in the moment and not think about past or future things that way you are training your brain to live right now and then eventually it's going to become more of a you know pattern of your brain kind of just stick into the moment because we have around 70,000 thoughts a day you guys and like 99% of them are always the same and that's so dysfunctional and crazy if you think about it so if you just kind of retrain your mind to stay right now then it's going to get out of this you know pattern does that make sense am i coming across I had a lot of people asking about how to become an influencer, how did you get there, how did you grow your Instagram, how did you grow your YouTube, your TikTok, all those things. I feel like it's all about consistency, you guys. You probably heard it before, it is cliche, but I have grown the most when I stayed consistent. Same goes for anything in life. Say if you go to the gym one time, you are not gonna see any results. If you go to the gym five times a week for a whole year, your body transformation is gonna be insane. That's why you have to be consistent with whatever you do. So becoming an influencer, you have to be consistent. Guys, it is the best time to be alive right now. I mean like, the crazy amount of opportunities there are out there. I grew my TikTok in a couple of months. I got 50,000 followers. TikTok is the best place to be right now, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like YouTube and Instagram is already super established. They're already super good creators and big creators. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it is harder. So I feel like TikTok, you definitely can do it on there, you guys. Now, when it comes to getting collaborations and deals and actually getting money from doing it, it's going to take a little time. You need to grow an audience first for brands to want to work with you. But if you just focus on what you love doing and what you're good at doing, then people are going to come to you anyway. And then the brands are going to come to you. And I also feel like it's a lot about trial and error. You will do things that you feel like, okay, this didn't go so well. I won't do it again. And then you will do one thing and feel like oh my god this went amazing i'm so good at it people enjoy watching it and then you continue doing that so it's all about finding yourself trial and error find out what you like doing find out what people enjoy watching like what are you waiting for guys the amount of possibilities and money and success you can do nowadays on social freaking media like sister just start i'm sure someone is gonna watch you and support you girl i have more friends on social media than what i have in real life and i kid you not people can be cruel sometimes and send you negativity but it's very important to kind of distinguish from it if you have the time to sit around and write something hateful then you have too much time baby like you need to go find a hobby okay it says how do you stay so in shape you look amazing 
thank you so much i have gained weight ever since my going to the gym every single day moment i was going to the gym consistently for a whole year my body transformation guys was insane i literally went from looking like a box into looking like a fashion nova model okay exaggeration moments no but really like it was that big of a transformation and then what happened was i moved to dubai where it's so hot I couldn't go to the gym or like even go for a walk. I couldn't move my body, it was too hot. And then the food there is just too good to not taste of everything. So I gained weight. If you just keep your diet somewhat balanced, you're gonna make it. And also weight lifting, like I cannot stress enough how much lifting has helped me. Like lifting weights. Guys, you will not look manly if you do it. You will actually look your best. Because I lifted weights and I gained muscles, I feel like I still have some muscles on my body, which means even if I do put on some weight and fat, I still have those curves underneath because of the muscle gain. I just try to like stick to a maintenance diet where like I'm not gaining weight, I'm not losing weight right now. I'm just I'm kind of happy to be honest. How much cost your veneers? I have gotten so many questions about my um, bonding lately. I'm gonna roughly go through everything. First things first, where did I get it done? I will not talk about it. I don't know why some people have a hard time accepting that I will not share the place I went to. There could be specific reasons to why I do not want to promote them. The job was insane, but perhaps the rest of it wasn't. Like, not what it looks like. I mean, like, going there every single time, perhaps the experience wasn't amazing. At the end of the day, I'm a normal human being with feelings, and just because I'm an influencer doesn't mean you can rip my heart apart and just know every single fucking... Oh my god, I'm getting really upset. People can get super aggressive about... As an influencer not wanting to share something and it's just it doesn't make sense to me like get over it go make your research just like i did i'm sure you will find something amazing come on however i will talk about the cost of it i got bonding which is not veneer teeth bonding is an alternative to veneers but you don't have to shave any of your teeth what they do is they will add a porcelain layer on top of your natural teeth to hide yours and the porcelain will kind of look better or like it will be the desired shape at least so i wanted a more like straight look because my teeth were very rounded so what they did was just added like porcelain layers on top of my own i did six of my front teeth it looks very natural. First presented the whitest shade to me. I put it on. First of all, it was too big of a difference from like my lower teeth. Um, so I decided to go with like a more yellow shade. It will match mine. I don't have to constantly keep bleaching my teeth to match the bonding. Um, so I feel like they're natural now. It feels amazing. I'm really happy with the results. Did it hurt? No, not at all. It cost me 7,000 crones for each tooth. So that is around 700 euros for each tooth. I got six of them done, which means I paid 42,000 crones, which equals 4,200 euros. It's very expensive. It was one of the big investments I've ever done for my appearance. Even my nose job didn't cost this much, you guys. The next question goes, what is your favorite perfume? And oh my God, I've gotten an obsession with perfume. Could have been obsessed with anything, but I decided perfumes. So say like top three favorite perfumes. First one being My Son Frank is Kirk John Baccarat Rouge 540. However, there are very cheap alternatives to it, but I really love the original. The second one being Good Girl Gone Bad by Killian. It's such a sexy scent. Very, very like just ugh, feminine. Love it. And the third one probably being By Riddos. Casablanca Lily. I recently got it. I have been obsessed with it for a whole year. Ah, uh, it's so good. Can we put it forth, please? Kilian's Forbidden Games. Oh, like those four perfumes, I could like just stick to them for the rest of my life. They're so good. If you guys have any good recommendations of perfumes I should try on, just let me know, okay? I'm obsessed. Do you consider yourself as a Muslim or only raised as one? I am born and raised as a Muslim. 
not in a very strict family though so coming from like a, a place a family where it's like we weren't super religious in the first place and then going to school in sweden for my whole life sometimes i question if i'm really allowed to say i'm muslim or if it's just if it's right for me to say muslim because i pretty much don't practice anything i drink alcohol i have tattoos i live with my boyfriend unmarried i basically do every single thing that i am not allowed to do but i believe in god and because i'm born and raised muslim i still say i'm muslim i don't know if it's just like an automatic reply i'm never gonna say i'm not muslim so it just I'm Muslim, I just don't practice it, I'm not religious. I find that whenever I go through a hard time and I ask God for help, I feel like I do get the help, which makes me feel bad at points because I'm like, I wish I could be more, I could rely more on God because I feel like it would just solve so much of my anxiety and future thoughts or you know like Allah basically tells you that whatever is written is gonna happen like there's not much to worry about and I feel like that's something I need in my life a lot of my anxiety comes from like stressing the future but what I have found also helped me was like just being more conscious and relying on my higher self I guess you can call that God or the universe or whatever you prefer for me it's just I ask God for help. At the end of the day, I will always just stick to like praying to God. I think I want to do one last question and that being about my nose job. I haven't done an update in freaking years. Um, but someone says, how is your breathing? Did it get any better or worse or is it the same? My breathing is still the same. I guess I have just learned to live with it. It's not as big of a contrast now because I don't really remember how it was breathing normally, if that makes sense. I can still, you know, get annoyed sometimes. I can't lay on my right side. I always have to like hold up because, you know, my nostrils kind of get collapsed. So I'm definitely still struggling with it, but you know, it's become an everyday life for me. So I don't really think of it as much, I guess. Also the, the um, like nose job itself, how it looks, it's kind of crooked. My nose is still like one nostril is bigger than the other. In photos, I can sometimes see how it's like going to the same way it was going before the operation. It's still crooked, but like the profile is insane. Like I love my profile, I'm happy I did it, but like perhaps I would have chosen another doc. I don't know, it's hard to say because I love my profile so much. I don't know if I would exchange that to like being able to breathe. Also, why I don't get a second nose job to fix my breathing issues is because I'm so afraid it will change my profile. Like, imagine being super happy with your profile and then going for a second nose job to fix your breathing issues and then ending up, you know, having a whole different profile that you don't enjoy, but now you can breathe. So it's kind of like you have to, you know, which one is more worth for you. I got so many questions, you guys, but I think I'm gonna stop there because I feel like this video is getting super long and my head is hurting from the studio lights. And if you guys did stick around for the whole video, thank you so much. Please don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram and I will see you guys in my next video.